Okay, so we now go to exclusions from gross income. This is still part of Section 32, gross income, but this is about the exclusions from gross income taxation or gross income. The following items shall not be included in gross income and shall be exempt from taxation under this title. There are well, several items here. I think it's seven and, well, yeah, sub-items, some other sub-items. But there are, we will discuss some provisions more extensively than the others. Well, you have this life insurance, you know this, you, the proceeds paid to, paid to the heirs or beneficiaries upon the death, of course, of the insured, that's excluded from gross income. The amount received by insured as a return of premium, this is like the return of your capital. Okay, remember that capital, the difference between capital and income. And the gifts, bequests, and devices, of course, because this is already subjected to donor's tax. Right? We'll go to that later. So the one, the one who received the gift should not be taxed anymore, or that's excluded from gross income. And compensation for injuries or sickness, or the, by suit or agreement, this one, or from the government, work, Workmen's Compensation Act, that would be excluded also from gross income. Income exempt under treaty. Well, this one, the, you respect the treaty, right? You remember the international law, par and param non habet imperium. You respect the other foreign power. You don't tax the uh, well, under treaty, okay? And retirement benefits, pensions, gratuities. Now, I want to discuss about this because you have this 10, 1050 rule. The, the rule here is that there must be a reasonable private benefit plan, okay, and you should be, the retiring official should be at least, should have rendered at least 10 years of service in the same employer, okay, the same employer, and should not be less than 50 years, so at least you should be at least 50 years at the time of the retirement. So as discussed in Santos versus Servier, the Supreme Court enumerated the following elements. And remember this, that the taxpayer is burdened to prove the concurrence of the following elements. It's not the employer, it's the taxpayer. There must be a reasonable private benefit plan, that's number one, maintained by the employer. And this, as according to the memorandum circular of the BIR, this must be registered with them and they, they, they should approve that. Otherwise, the employer is mandated to withhold the tax for the income or for the retirement pay that uh, the, the employee received. And second, the retiring official must be at least 10 years. That's the 1050 rule. 10 years, the same employer, rendering service for at least 10 years, and the retiring official should not be less than 50 years of age at the time of the re retirement. And this one, this should be availed only once, okay? Because from the word retire, you're already tired. Okay, so just remember this. The taxpayer is burdened to prove the concurrence of the four elements, okay? And, uh, well, let's go to the other provisions. Mm. Miscellaneous item. Income derived by foreign government, again, the parin parin non habet imperium uh, doctrine in the international law, you respect other foreign government. And um, income derived by the government or its, well, what, these are the two, belongs to the inherent power or inherent limitations of taxation. This is what? You don't tax you, the government or political subdivision. This is like putting the money from one pocket to the other. This paragraph C or subparagraph C of item 7 here, prizes and awards, this is different from the one which is, which is provided in section 24, okay? The passive income, bravo, on prizes and winnings. This is different because this involves recognition of religious, charitable, scientific, education, artistic, literary, or civic achievements. What, the... the these entities recognize what you did for society, but there are two requisites that, that must be present.
Okay, you have there is no action on the part of the actor, of course, to enter into the contest. Okay, and the recipient is not required to render substantial future services as a condition to receiving the prize or award. So again, this is different from the prizes and winnings. Okay, and this is if you receive this kind of award like if you receive 500 pesos in recognition plus plaque certificate or whatever then that award is excluded from gross income okay and subparagraph d i think this was asked before you just remember that the athletic competition must be sanctioned by the national sports association whether in the philippines or abroad okay the Sanctioned by their national sports association. So that's the word there. There. Now, 13 month pay and other benefits. Well, you remember this was already amended. It's 82 now, thank God, from 13. The question might be asked because normally uh, in the accounting board review, what if there's this like 100,000 benefit? So, would, still, would it still be subject to tax because it's, it exceeds the 82,000? Only up to or the excess of the 82. The 82 is the ceiling. So 82 ex is excluded from gross income and the remainder would be taxable or would be, should be included in the computation of taxable income. Okay? And GSIS, SSS Medicare, well, this is, this is read this. What I want to discuss more extensively is this one. Paragraph, subparagraph G, gains from the sale of bonds and debentures. You remember BDO versus Republic, okay? The peace bonds, the controversy there. BDO and the other bank said, well, the interest falls under Section 32B7G, which is excluded from gross income. So we are not, we are not uh, mandated or ordered. We should not pay the tax. Okay, we should not be withheld of the, the tax on interest. The Supreme Court said, The interest income earned from bonds is not synonymous with the gains contemplated under Section 32B7G of the NARC. The term gain as used in Section 32 Bravo 7G does not include interest. You remember that. Which represents forbearance for the use of money. Okay. Gains from sale or exchange or retirement of bonds or other certificate of indebtedness fall within the general category of gains derived from dealings and property. Section 32A3. So, Section 32A3, here you go. Gains derived from dealings and property. While interest from bonds or other certificate of indebtedness falls within the category of interests, under Section 32A4, so Section 32A4, here it is. The, the use of the term gains from sale in Section 32B7G shows the intent of Congress not to include interest as referred under Section 24, 25, 27, and 28 in the exemption. Okay, The gains contemplated in Section 32B7 refers to 1. First, gain realized from trading of bonds before their maturity date, which is the difference between the selling price of the bonds in the secondary market and the price at which the bonds were purchased by the seller. So, okay, you remember this this secondary market and primary market? This might be asked, but it's too technical. I don't, I don't know. Uh, well, the if the examiner will ask you about what is primary and secondary market. That's too technical, but who, who knows? You just read that. Well, the primary market is the one that, from the company itself, which issued the security or the bond. And the, the the purchaser, the first purchaser, okay? And this one, like the video, they bought that from the government because the Republic issued the bond, the peace bond. This is the primary market. And the video now, sold that to other banks or yeah and uh, the uh, other banks sold that to other individuals or corporations 
that's the secondary market class. Okay, primary market from the from the source of the securities, that's the primary market. And from the, the the purchaser, the purchaser now will sell that to the other companies or uh, whoever that is interested of the bond. Then that's the secondary market. So in this case, if well, if the individual purchased that from the, the company, and later on he realized, well, I need the money. I need my one million. It's stuck there in the bonds. Well, I will sell that. Okay. If I bought the money or the bond for 1 million and I will sell that for like 1.5 because the interest that would that it will earn in the next 10 years would be 1 million, okay? Then I will just sell it for 1.5 because it's just like on the fifth year. So the gain which you derive from that 1.5 minus 1 million, that is exempt or excluded from gross income. This is the the example that is the example of that okay or in number two gain realized with the last holder of the bonds when the bonds are redeemed at maturity what is that which is the difference between the proceeds from the retirement of the bonds and the price at, at which such last holder acquired the bonds so if the last holder is okay if i if i sold my bond or the bond that i bought from uh, X company to Mr. Y, Mr. Y bought that from me for like 1.5, okay? And at the end of the, uh, the maturity period, Mr. Y presented the bond to the company and the company paid him 2 million for that. So he bought that from me for 1.5 and he got 2 million for the, uh, the bond, the redemption of the bond. Then what? The 500,000 he earned should be excluded from his gross income that's the import of it and if the bond stated in the interest if it earns interest annually because normally interest earns well you earn interest annually if they pay the quarterly whatever that you receive from the interest would be subjected to the 20 percent final withholding tax you remember section 24 if you're individual at 27 if you're if you corporation so the idea there is interest is different from the gains you derive when you sell the bond. Okay? That is excluded. The gains is excluded from gross income. But, uh, because that's gross income is the basis in arriving at what? The taxable income. This might be asked, you might be asked of the difference between the interest that you receive from holding a bond that would be subjected to 20%. Now, in this case, you remember the BDO versus the Republic, there was this contractual tax exemption here. And uh, the idea there that the VR said, no way, because of the deposit substitute uh, uh, definition under Section 22 and the 20 lender rule and at any one time, as I've discussed in Section 22. So you must remember that. You might be asked, well, you just remember the dealings. So whenever you sell bond before the maturity date and you derive gain from that, that is excluded from your gross income. But for the interest that you receive, according to Section 24, if you are individual, passive income, then that is subjected to what? Final withholding tax of 20%. Okay? So that's it. Next, we will discuss about the fringe benefit. Mm. Fringe with benefit, FB. So you remember the AF and FF, the kissing friends and the FF, the forever friend. So, well, anyway, that's it for section 32, Bravo, or the gross income. Memorize section 32A and master the exclusion. Okay.